Perfect. Now another amazing superpower, which will be the first in the probably in the world in terms of utilizing in a hackathon environment, even before before it's being released publicly. A Logitech team is with us. Um, Mario and Aidan, I think, is here as well. So uh, I don't know if Aidan will join, but um, welcome, Logitech team. Uh, it's very nice to see you uh, after this AI superpowers. We also need some kind of like a magic wand, we were saying, uh, that we can a little bit uh, use it um, for different high precision purposes. Uh, thanks for joining, Mario. And uh, we would like to give the stage to you. Maybe you can a little bit explain to us since we will have have enough access to uh, access to enough uh, 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 pants, stylus pants. Maybe you can tell us how we can pick it up quickly because we will probably it will be the first time that we are seeing. So the more uh, background information will be helpful. Sure, thank you. Thank you for having me, Ferhan, and uh, hello to everybody. Uh, I know if I don't know if my colleague Aidan will will be joining, but anyway, I'm Mario. I'm a software engineer uh, working for Logitech and based in Lausanne, Switzerland. And uh, yeah, the goal today uh, is to to share a little bit with you a uh, quick introduction to uh, this new device that we are really super excited uh, about because, as you were mentioning, uh, Ferhan, it's. It has been announced, it has been uh, given in uh, uh, pilot builds, like uh, previous ver pre-release -pre versions of the device to, to some app developers uh, who have started already experimenting with. If you look into uh, X or LinkedIn or YouTube, you will be able to find that people are already starting to share the, the, the experiments that they have been doing with. Uh, and we are really super excited also because we are going to provide around 15 uh, units during the hackathon in, in, in London and then in, in, in the following ones um, for teams to, to experiment with and uh, cre create some, uh, so, so some great uh, applications that we are really looking forward to, to try out and, uh, and see. And uh, there, there will also be uh, some prices. So the, the the, the teams with the best uh, applications will also be able to to keep the device actually yeah. which is are also pre release uh, they they are not uh, on the market yet uh, yeah but they be able to, <laughs> to the go first home time with them they will have access uh, Aidan is here hello Aidan uh, thanks for uh, yeah. making this happen in such a short period of time to make these devices ready uh, just to maybe before start just to let everyone know about the category so uh, as you know, we have four categories, right? M three meta categories, challenge categories, one Pearson category, right? So four, uh, you have to select one out of these four categories. But Logitech price is a little bit spatially positioned. This means that it's an add-on price. This, how, how it works, you are first selecting out of these four categories, three from meta skills, uh, utility design, gaming, or Pearson category, one of these four. And then out of this one of these four, if you have enough time and interest to add Logitech stylus support on top of your existing uh, controller or hand tracking uh, input available abil uh, abilities or um, um, uh, capabilities, you can add Logitech support and then you are immediately being eligible for an additional Logitech price. So in theory, someone can win Meta or Pearson price. On top of that, they can win also Logitech price as well, as long as it is Logitech powered as well. Just to make sure that it's very clear. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, go ahead, Mario, Aidan. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I, I see that Aidan has joined. Uh, Aidan, you want to say uh, a few words? Uh, no, Mario, I, I was just admitted as a panelist now, so you're all good to go. I can jump in as needed. Thank you. Sure, yeah, so feel free to, to, to chime in. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a very quick introduction. Uh, you, you can see lots of videos, including uh, the, the ones in our official um, uh, web page. Uh, just look for the MX Inc. We are really, really happy with this. Really thrilled to 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 see how it's gonna be, uh, how it's going to enable uh, different applications. It, it's been developed in, in partnership with Meta. It's really a 
a very well uh, in integrated device is not like a third party that uh, needs some uh, complex process to, to to set up it's uh we're gonna see it's it's really like a meta uh, a quest uh, controller just with a very different form factor that we hope will enable uh, different uh, use cases so what is it it's it's a stylus it's spatially tracked, uh, so it, it, just like a, like a quest controller. So it's tracked in space and in orientation. It has two analog inputs that allow you to really draw or annotate or uh, capture uh, information while you use it in space, as it's being illustrated there, like manipulating uh, virtual objects. But it also has an analog uh, sensor at the tip that what will be normally the place where a, a normal a physical stylus uh, drop, drops some ink. So you can actually use it to over a surface, a 2D surface, to, to paint, to kind of outline uh, an existing 3D object, or, or simply to handwrite or annotate uh, uh, stuff in, in, while in a virtual or a mixed reality environment. Um, so it's the MX Ink. It has also, and you'll be able to to try it out. It comes with uh, with its inkwell, which is like a charging dock uh, that uh, lets you like place it in a in a nice place next to your working environment, and at the same time it will keep it charged. It's a light device. It's around thirty grams. And well, what, uh, how does it work? What information can you get out of it? Well, besides the pose, as I mentioned, the, the position in 3D space and uh, its orientation, of course. Well, it has a number of, uh, of inputs. I was mentioning already the, the, the tip. Uh, it has two, well, another analog uh, button, which we call it the, the primary or the pressure button. It's really intended uh, to, to be held like, like I'm showing on, on the screen, like with my index finger on top of that big uh, pressure uh, button there. Uh, uh, so that that way you can, you can draw and it's pressure sensitive so that you can use this information to, if you are drawing, if you are dropping ink or something else, you can change that based on, on how, how hard you press on that. Uh, it has two additional buttons there, which you can, use like uh, what will be like the grab button in the quest controller, like to take an object, place it somewhere else. And uh, some additional uh, inputs, again, trying to bring in as much as possible the capabilities that we already had on, 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 a, quest, uh, on a quest controller. Uh, however, with the reduced form factor, we wanted to really uh, keep it as, as thin as possible. We will not be able to to, to put all the, the, the inputs that you would normally have on a Quest controller, notably the, the two A, A and B buttons, plus the grab, plus the thumbstick. Uh, you cannot put all that in, 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 into a, a stylus and, and keep it uh, in, a, in a reasonable size. So we have two, two buttons there. And then we also have the possibility to, to detect uh, double taps, like not a click, but really just like tap, tap. And that when it's detected, you can use that as an additional input. Uh, it has haptics, uh, it, it, same as, as with a, a, a Quest controller. You can send uh, haptic pulses that you can customize to, to create different effects to, to signal to your user uh, that you have effectively selected something or entering a specific mode and so on. And well, it has also its uh, meta OS button uh, that will allow you to, to quit uh, the application or to invoke uh, uh, overlay uh, menus just as you would with the normal meta uh, button in the Quest, uh, in the Quest controller. I was saying that it's uh, really a great uh, collaboration with Meta because they, they have uh, gone a long way to integrate it and make it a, a, a really a first class citizen on the Meta OS. Uh, when you pair it, once uh, you will have the, the, the last uh, uh, Meta OS version uh, with full support, you will be presented with uh, some cards that will give you some basic information about how you can use this one in uh, to navigate really inside the the, the, the VR shell, uh, the menus, uh, and also on, on, on the applications that will uh, support it specifically. Uh, 
also some sneak peeks. Uh, this will be freely available starting uh, with the MetaOS version 69. Um, many people might already have uh, access to the uh, version 68. There you may or not uh, have access to this, but it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just additional customizations uh, that you can uh, easily live without uh, especially for, for the, at the hackathon, but it's just to, to give you an idea that it's going to be uh, fully integrated uh, with settings to change the, the response uh, of the analog inputs and so on. Um, so when we will get uh, to, to the hackathon and we'll have the devices available, what do you need to, to, to set up the MX Inc? As I was saying, and keep repeating myself, it's you can see it as, as a Quest uh, Touch controller. You can pair it using the, the Meta Horizon app uh, as, as you would uh, with, with uh, if you wanted to pair another controller. For that, it's, it's, it's important uh, to, to have at least uh, Meta OS V68. And uh, if you want to be sure that you have the really latest uh, version, then the headset needs to be put into what Meta calls the public test channel, which gets like the uh, High, high uh, frequently um, updates for that. So once you have it paired, once you have the latest and greatest Meta, Meta OS, how do you start uh, developing apps with it? We are putting together uh, the, the, this uh, website where we already share with developers uh, basic uh, assets such as the 3D model of the device, and a few Unity prefabs, uh, a build of an, a Unity app that shows a, a quick demo uh, showcasing the, the, the main capabilities of the device. And, and we will add, we will keep adding uh, uh, information and, and also Unity uh, packages that, 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 that could help you in, in your development. Uh, but really, these are the, the specific inputs that, that you can use. Actually, if you have already uh, a Unity app, which is using uh, the, the inputs normally found in a, in a Quest controller, such as the trigger or the grip button or the primary, which will be the A button on the right hand or, or, or the thumbstick, these specific ones will give you access to the, to the inputs and the device. Uh, later down the road, we, we are going to, uh, to be supported uh, thanks to a, a Meta SDK uh, update uh, in, in a more formal way. Uh, but for the hackathon, I think we, we, we are going to stick to, to what we call the, the legacy mode. And uh, this is uh, how the, the inputs are, are mapped. Um, and also, you can use the standard Unity uh, functions to, to, to send haptics and, uh, and create some, some effects. More specifically speaking, uh, we are working with uh, Unity 2022.3, uh, and uh, this will be like the basic uh, code that you will need to use if you wanted to uh, uh, get access to the to the stylus inputs. It's always paired as the right hand controller. Uh, what normally is the trigger in the touch uh, controller. It corresponds to the to the primary button on, on the stylus. If you want to get access to the values of the tip, it's it's a bit strange, but it's has been mapped as the x-axis of the thumbstick on the on the touch controller. And so that that's how you you would access it. Then the grip button in, in the touch controller is corresponds to the grab button, the front one in the in the stylus, the one closer to the tip. The primary button, which would be like the A button on, on, on the Quest controller, is the, the back button on the, the rear button on, on the stylus. Uh, and then again, I, I was saying, if you double tap, then that will give you uh, the, the, the equivalent of, um, of the B button uh, touch even. So that way you have a bit of flexibility, uh, some more inputs uh, depending on, on your application. Really, we believe that with uh, the two analog inputs, plus maybe uh, the grab button, you, you can do uh, a lot of interesting things. You can select uh, and you can use the, the, the pressure values to, to do many, many different things. 
Now, what kind of, of stuff have we uh, been imagining and, and implementing and experimenting with? This is actually an old app because this is not the first stylus that we work with. However, it's the first that is going to be uh, fully available as a commercial product. Uh, but we initially imagined that it, it could be used for, for annotation in VR, like to have virtual post-its and to uh, annotate and manipulate uh, 3D models. And uh, for that, you will need to create some uh, UIs in, in, in 3D uh, that, that you could be able to, to, to manipulate with the, with the device. Uh, it's, it's really interesting. The, the form factor really changes the way uh, that, that you can to, to open new possibilities of what you can do in VR. For, for the first time, you will be really able to actually write on uh, in air or on a surface as you would uh, with a normal pen but, uh, in mixed reality. And uh, just before this talk, uh, um, we, we were hearing about the, the different things you can do with AI. Well, nothing prevents you from uh, sending uh, the strokes, your handwriting, to an AI uh, service and, and, and get it uh, automatically translated uh, into actual text that you can use, for instance. Um, so I, I was saying this device, we have started sharing it with app developers. And this is just a quick sample of uh, uh, so, so some interesting experiments that uh, developers have, have started to share with us. Uh, first of all, well, we will provide a lot of support uh, for Unity development, but it also works uh, using WebXR uh, since it's supported as a, as a as a quest controller, and it can also be used uh, if you wanted to do a native uh, OpenXR application uh, for mobile or or for uh, uh, based on, on on PC using the link cable. Um, and also, if you wanted to do some uh, uh, Unreal uh, Engine uh, app, the, the same, uh, since it's uh, it shows as a Quest uh, controller, uh, the, the, there will be ways for you to, to, to interact with it. So let me just quickly show um, like this one, for instance. I think it's a nice uh, demo. This is a web application. It's a WebXR app uh, just uh, showing the, 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 the stylus and how you will be able to, to, to draw in air with it. Just a quick example. It's, it's nice because it's just a web app that you open in your uh, Meta web browser and it will work. Out of the box, there is another interesting one uh, from uh, Javier Davalos uh, who develops a uh, uh, Pikmin uh, app. And this one showcases a number of things like how you can create menus uh, in, in VR or in, a, in mixed reality and interact with the stylus. He, he, he gives interesting uh, comments uh, on, on how it will be interesting to change the, the direction of the ray casts so that the manipulation, uh, uh, depending on, on the context and on the position of the virtual menus, uh, you could change that to, to make it easier. Um, Later on, well, it shows how, how, how it can be used to, to work with different kinds of UI, including a virtual keyboard. And also how you can actually switch uh, very naturally, in, instantly uh, between uh, a classic touch controller. You take the stylus, you work with it for a bit, and then you can put it back on, on the table and, and take your controller again. And you could change, adapt the interaction uh, depending on the tool that you have uh, at hand. Uh, so for that, that means it, it allows you to pair, uh, well, your two Quest controllers will be there. In addition to that, you can pair the stylus and the three uh, will, will be there ready to be used. You cannot use them three at the same time, uh, on only two at a time, but, but you can freely switch uh, between them. Uh, then also talking about some uh, well-known um, uh, VR apps we just heard before from ShapesXR. Just a quick um, quick video of some early experimentation uh, uh, that Paul was doing there on how to place uh, menus and how to interact with menus and UI uh, within ShapesXR. ShapesXR has a version that supports uh, the styles. We have been working with them 
for, for a good while now, and, and they are going to, to, to support it. Same for all, all other well-known applications, such as Gravity Sketch, Painting VR, RQ for architecture. There, there are some uh, medical applications that find it very interesting uh, as a tool for annotation and uh, e even uh, planning of uh, surgery or annotating the virtual uh, bodies so that um, the, the, the doctor can start to think about how uh, surgery is going to be uh, performed and so on. So as uh, we keep saying in this kind of talks, sky is the limit. It's really uh, a tool that we believe enables uh, many different use cases. And uh, we are really looking forward to see what, uh, what you can create with it. So, Perfect. Yeah, I don't know if we have uh, any questions or yeah, comments. Let's check. Let's check if any questions. Uh, could you use two MX inks, left and right? Very interesting question. <laughs> yeah, this has come over and over again, uh, uh, right, Aidan? Uh, not for the moment. It's it's only one uh, that can be paired uh, at a time. Uh, that we are uh, talking with Meta about that. Yeah, yeah and, and actually the, the FAQ page on the on github has a lot of has an answer to that and to a few other kind of questions like they literally are the top questions we're getting in it that is in one of them yeah perfect uh we will have a notion page so all the links and presentations whatever we will uh logitech will provide will be at your uh, notion page everyone so you can easily check and again uh there will be a discord channel dedicated to logitech mx inc so you can find Logitech team there supporting both remotely and in person for the hackathons. Uh, the release time and the price, of course, for those who may uh, get this for free because of the winning in the hackathon, but for those who cannot, how they can access. I, I, it's it's, gonna be, it's yeah. going to be, I think it's 129, is it Mario? I think is the mm -hmm. price. And, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I think so. Yeah, plus thirty uh, additional thirty dollars. US euro euro price, or do you know the difference? US or Europe price? It's typically for consumer electronics, it's kind of the same, which means us Europeans uh, really yeah. <laughs> pay pay a price, pay a premium. But I, I think that's that's typically it. Uh, and okay. I guess it, it's officially available from Meta Connect uh, uh, date. Perfect. Perfect. So, September twenty fifth. We may expect some. Full announcements yep. on stage as well at MetaConnect. Perfect. This is really a privilege to have access to these tools before even it's officially uh, on the market. So we are really happy to welcome Logitech team. Uh, if there are any further questions, we are happy to um, answer. If not, I think... I, uh, I have one, actually. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, hi. So it's really, really great advice. So... Uh, are you planning on making it available also for, uh, let's say, other existing platforms outside of the, the meta universe? So, uh, I it's... think it's uh, on the table, yeah, but not, not immediately. So on, on the software side, it's open XR, but, you know, uh, but like, honestly, it's been, meta has been an absolute 100% total kind of focus. And you know, we've, or I've certainly not been, we've not been looking anywhere else really. Okay, thank you. Actually, there's very interesting thing. Uh, Fabian is here. Is um, since I can actually um, understand with the image capture, uh, not only the physical objects but annotations. This is actually an amazing opportunity. If I cannot find somewhere uh, to to write, etc., that I can immediately write with uh, my pen, and then also uh, image capture that whatever you want to add, because let's admit, right? Yeah. Writing is much more easier to before you actually uh, can bring a 3D object, etc., quickly from somewhere. So uh, that's also another opportunity that you can maybe uh, use combination of things. Uh, so combination of superpowers. So I think that might be very interesting if you want to quickly add another element quickly or uh, some kind of like a, at least a, uh, I think a chip GPT-40. There was actually a question which I want to actually bring it that. How powerful GPT-40 to recognize a handwriting, right? That's a very interesting thing because then 
there should be a literally a nice opportunity to combine this if mm -hmm. because I see that Gemini announcement of Google they are writing something on the uh, whiteboard and then Gemini understands that and then even brings the uh, uh, the maybe uh, something on in from internet so if it is possible I think that there are tons of opportunities uh, that can happen we will look into that if GPT 4.0 it can recognize uh, the uh, handwriting then it will be amazing of course to to uh, take it from there by utilizing logitech and um, any other last maybe comments or uh, suggestions or uh, warnings uh, mario i done before before we go deep into uh, logitech can we do that can we decide that later right that's my question like can i because as you can imagine it's maybe only possible that if I have enough time left, right? So can I decide that at the last point of my uh, uh, thing? Or do you think that it should be well planned before even starting the writing coding? What's your opinion? I think or what's integration that wise, it's, it's quite, quite, quite easy to, I would say, make a last minute integration. However, if you want to really take advantage of the, the possibilities of the device, you, you should at least, I think, uh, con consider what uh, this pen-like input will bring in uh, to your project. And you can freely prototype uh, with the Quest controllers, and then at the end, uh, add, add the stylus. Uh, uh, using the mapping that I, I just mentioned, you, you, you can test a lot with the Quest controller. And then at the end, you just swap it uh, and it should work. And it should take the inputs as, as you were planning to. Uh, yeah. Unless you can want to also focus fully on, on that and create a new painting app or something that does some generative AI based on uh, uh, sketches or something like this. In that case, I think it's also better to, to start integrating uh, early. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's important. And the shape steam will be in some of the uh, Cologne and other uh, uh, sessions, London as well. Uh, and uh, they can also give a lot of tips because they are the ones who really integrate very nicely. And I think you you guys are already talking with them for Hackathon. So happy to, happy to also uh, join forces there to make sure that they are getting also from a prototyping perspective. Great, I think uh, we are coming to the end of this session. We have only one more session left, but before uh, it starts, it's like the Git Git repository and the uh, co collaboration on Git. It's a very one of the most important topics as well, especially when you are doing hackathon. But uh, thank you, Mario, Aidan, and the Logitech team to make this available and possible in such a short period of time. We will see each other probably in one of these hackathons in the next few days. And uh, till then, we will be really looking forward to um, checking. So is there anything that you suggest that we uh, a little bit check the links from the links since before we have the device so that we will be ready? What's your suggestion? GitHub link or? I, I, I think I think Mario explained it pretty well. If you use it as a touch right hand controller, everything is is, is, is ready to go. I did see a question pop up. In the chat there about how uh, how will you get access to MX, MX Inc devices at the day and how to, how that will be managed? Well, I think Ferran will have a batch of them. I, um, I think maybe 10, 12, 14 per per site. And uh, exactly, I think, yeah. And, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a really deployment, right? That you are doing, needing that uh, while you are testing, especially or when you are integrating. So we are assuming probably there will be maybe I know uh, if there is even 10, 10 teams who want to bring it, uh, we will make it available one for team. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. That will be the logistics, but we have to really see uh, who has an interest, who doesn't, and then we will try to find a way um, as much as we can, okay? Um, but uh, you, you will probably not have two, two pants per team. I would say you will mm -hmm. only have one. I think it is enough for testing purposes. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much again, Mario Aidan, and uh, hoping to see you uh, next Thank week. You. And uh, see sure. you. See you back. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Great. So we have one final less uh, session left, which is again quite important. 
Ray from uh, from uh, our team will share more details about Git, which is probably one of the most important and time consuming uh, parts of a hackathon um, flow workflow. If you are if you are not taking enough precaution beforehand, so Ray will give a lot of hints about that and a little bit share a little, a little bit about the flow. Hello, Ray. How are you? Hi, hello. I'm good. Uh, right now it's like in 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 midnight right now, so I'm trying my best to stay awake while <laughs> doing this presentation. I'll do my best. Thank you very much. Thank you very yeah. much. Let's keep it like um, 15, 20 minutes, and then maybe if there are any questions, okay. let's do that. If especially if you are new to using Git solo, I'm sure maybe every one of you, especially developers, know. But if you haven't used Git with multiple people on one single project, I strongly recommend this session uh, so that you don't have uh, some merge or clash issues. Stage is yours, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for Han. Uh, yeah, uh, so just second, checking, I am I able to, to share the screen? I, yeah, yeah, definitely. I have to just stop the recording. Uh-huh. Um, and then...